everybody's gearing up for the games. This is Loughborough Railway Station, where, as you can see, huge renovation work is taking place in preparation for the arrival this summer of the entire Great Britain team. They're using the university here as their holding camp before the start of the Olympics proper. And it's also here where some of Lincolnshire's finest athletes are using the magnificent facilities. So what, you may ask, are we doing here? Well, this is where 400 metre runner Richard Buck is earning a few bucks by working here to pay for his training to make his Olympic dream come true. Richard Buck is so, so strong. Total concentration. This was Richard, who's from Grimsby, at the European Indoor Championships where he won two medals. But he's still not considered good enough to be funded as a full-time athlete. It's been a couple of months now since Richard lost his funding from UK Athletics, worth around £20,000. For now, work is the only way that he can make up that shortfall. What is your job? I'm a customer sales assistant on dairy, so I uh, stack the shelves yeah. and make sure the stock are tidy in the back. And the, the, but the bottom line, why did you have to take the job? Well, when I lost my funding from UKA, uh, I had to find some way to raise the money, and this was the only job I could find, so I applied for it, and I was lucky enough to get it. And how do you combine a full-time job here with being a full-time athlete? Well, basically, I, I do the track and field 9 till 5 in the day, and then I pick up shifts here 5 to 10 o'clock at night, so it's a long day, but... You must be exhausted. Yeah, you get tired. <laughs> If Richard's Olympic ambitions are ever going to get off the starting blocks, then training must be fitted in around work. It's the harsh reality, life without funding. I turn up around about nine o'clock. We spend about an hour and a half to two hours warming up with some technical drills. Then we get into the main part of the session, which um, today was speed. It's usually, again, another couple of hours running that. Small break for lunch. Um, and then we pick up a couple of general strength circuits, so a gym program in the afternoon. And then it's off to work? Yeah, then it's off to work. <laughs> when you're at work, how much are you thinking about the minutiae of your training and I should be doing this and how bad have I improved that? How much is it always on your mind? Uh, track and field is always on your mind in some way, but I think the good thing about work is it kind of gives me a chance to focus on something that isn't track and field. It, it sounds strange, but I actually find it, it's quite nice to have something that completely different to track and field. Even though I'm doing it so that I can keep running, when I'm there, I'm not at the track and it's just nice to have that break. The thing about being here is you know, there's these constant reminders, signs everywhere about this being the holding camp and you get to the railway station and they're building it because of the fact that the GB team are here. How much is it, is it always on your mind? You can't escape it here. I think it's, it's brilliant, but you, know, you don't need the signs up here. You're reminded of the London Olympics, no matter where you go these days. It's in the news every other day. And we know, we know what we're training for. That's why we're, we're pushing so hard, and that's why everyone's making sacrifices. While UK athletics might not think that Richard's got what it takes to win a medal in London, that's only made him more determined to succeed. I think since losing the funding, I have become more motivated. It means more to me now because I'm kind of like I'm doing it a lot more of my own back. Look at Richard Buck's face. Once I'd got to grips with it and realised what I had to do, it was just a case of making sure that there was no excuses and that I did everything that I needed to do so that 2012 would be a success no matter what. <laughs>